Hey everyone, it's Friday the 28th of July and it's 7.30 in the evening. Where's July gone? Now it feels like it only started like a few days ago and now we're pretty much at the end of it. Right, today's video is going to be model railway related. For the most part there's a few odd bits and pieces here that I'm going to show you. Um, but yeah, for the most part it's model railway related. Now, I did actually have a model railway video all filmed. I serviced up a bunch of locomotives. I got all the B12 serviced. Both my Thomases, Percy. I even got this little one running and fixed up. A couple of brushes in there, cleaned it all up. That runs. Um, yeah, I actually quite enjoyed that video. I think it went on for about an hour and a half. And then I lost half the footage between transferring it from the camera to the PC. I don't know where it went. So I was a bit miffed. Um, but I have got six more locomotives that I picked up Wednesday. So my youngest brother and uh, his lady friend are um, staying over for a few days. I actually don't know when they go back. because. <laughs> um, he moved to Ireland with his girlfriend to live in Northern Ireland because that's where she comes from. Um, yeah, so he lives over there, but they come over here, you know, for a visit for a few days or so. Anyway, they invited me to a car boot sale over at Arming Hall here in Norfolk, which is literally just on the edge of Norwich. Um, and I do believe, if memory serves correctly, that it is the biggest car boot in Norfolk. Um, which you can have anywhere up to 600 stores. I'm pretty certain we didn't have 600 there Wednesday, but more than what we get at Alsham. But then again, Alsham is a smaller site, and a lot of the other car boots in Norfolk are on smaller sites, hence why they're smaller. Um, so yeah, I did find one of the well, six. Five came from one stall, and one I got with a bicycle light and I bought the pair for three quid. <laughs> so it cost me one pound fifty. Um, yeah, and the other five from the other guy, he told me they were tested and working and I did test them at Mum's in a 12 volt power supply. I was actually running my uh, fan on. And yeah, most of them did actually work. One pound fifty one didn't, obviously. I didn't expect it to, to be honest. Um, you'll see why I had that hint as well I want to show it to you. Um, there's a couple of the others, they sort of worked but not very well. But then again, as they did something, I guess that technically means they worked. And it, just, it just depends on your definition of work. Well, worked but not well, that would be my description. You just see smudges tap wet. Is someone after some attention from Daddy? I think he is. Snowy's gone to sleep somewhere. Thank Fudge for that, because she is so hyperactive and full of energy. <laughs> I think he might be up here as well, just to get a break from her, because she doesn't really give him much of a break, bless him. Does she? So yeah, Arming Hall car boot, I got a set of vintage Christmas lights. Um, I've got to figure out what voltage bulbs these take, because you can kind of still find them on eBay, but they're not easy. Um, I think that would be quite easy to find, because these run on the 240 volt mains, and they're all in series, so just do some maths, I can't remember what the maths is off the top of my head, but there's maths there. <laughs> Um, some bulbs did actually, well they didn't actually come with them, I had to spend 50p to get them, so those lights cost me 50p and these bulbs cost me 50p. But I like these bulbs, I don't know if they actually work. And there's only six. You don't get light bulbs like this anymore, do you? I've got a feeling they're a PIFCO set, because PIFCO love to do things like this. Um, I don't even know what the voltage is of those. I've got another set 
in the lounge as well. An older set. Right. That's the bicycle light I got with the loco. You don't get the batteries for these anymore, but you can get adapters that make it so you can use modern batteries in one of these. I don't think I'd have paid much more for it because that reflector's not very good. It's ever ready, the switch still works. You can get these on eBay, but good ones really do fetch uh, a nice price. All the um, material is coming off of the reflector, unfortunately. And at the moment, I can't get the lens bit unscrewed. Never mind. Um, I did get some die cast as well. Uh, what else did I get? Die They're in a bag down there. I'll do those in another video. Um, I've got an LED battery light as well because I just couldn't resist for a quid. I'm starting to like these sort of LED lights that mimic neon. It's actually not that bright. And I've got brand spanking new batteries in there. I don't know if it's been used a lot. I still got some use in it. It's only got to be visible in the dark anyway, because I'll probably just hang it up somewhere and just use it as a nightlight. <laughs> I could do with a few other LED lights I've got dotted about the place. Um, oh yeah, I've got a cat carrier for these two. Because uh, my old Nemo, bless him, he would sit in my arms good as gold, so I could I had no fear of actually carrying you know, him from here, down the th uh, two flights of stairs and to the other end of the block to a car when I had to take him to the vets a few times. Because he would just sit my arms good as gold, but I don't trust these two to do the same thing. Um, so yeah, this cat care is only a fiver. It's complete, it's not broken, needs to clean. I mean, it's not ridiculously filthy, it just needs a bit of a wipe down. Like it's been in storage somewhere, so. I'll give you cuddles and you're wagging your tail. Let's. Let's. Make signals, buddy. You're a bit hot as well, because I'm not as hot in this flat this evening. Let's just turn that fan that way a little bit, shall we? Yeah, anyway, let's get on with these locos, shall we? So, I even actually, I actually showed you how to put these bodies on the B12s. It's actually ridiculously easy. Literally, a little metal tab on the end of the metal chassis on this that goes through a little slot in the body at the front. So you just slot that on first and drop the back down. And you put your little screw in, which is just a tiny little um, black Phillips screw to match the um, colour of the bodywork. But it is on the blue one, on the other two that I've got, the uh, BR black and LNER one, that's actually a little brass screw. A bit miffy, you know, all of these, these are all running beautifully, I had, you know. Apart from these two, because I haven't done anything with these 2040s yet. Actually, the other thing I haven't done is actually connected power to the track. You got caught up in dirty laundry. I don't actually know why there's a dirty t shirt down there, but apparently there is. Mm. Mm. I pulled on that one a bit too hard because I've pulled the alligator clip off. Let's try that again. Right. You start chasing me bloody wires. <laughs> Somewhere, it's not those ones. What have I done with them? I have actually got a pair of yellow. Ah, never mind, I found them. Just looking for these. Because these ones really clamp down. 
on the cables, but you can still um, pull cli uh, crocodile clips off. Oh, I forgot to take that one off, didn't I? Oh well. I can stay on there now. Shall I stick them on your tail? Mm -hmm. So, what we're going to do first, before we go into the locos I got, I'm going to show you what this tool does. Because I really like this one. And I got this one from my stepdad because he had two or three of them kicking about. Two of them, I think. That just sits on your track like that. And what they're designed for is to make it easier to get your locomotives and your rolling stock on the track. Especially locos B12. You know, we've got a separate tender or even a tender that's wired to it because. You know, it's tender driven, this one isn't though. You've got your wibbly wobbly wheels on the front. <coughs> Which can mean, you know, it can be a bit of a chore to get it on the track. Even if you've done it no end of times like I have. And so that's the loco is on, and you've got a mess about the coal tender. Oh, that oh, come to the slid off. There we go. Now the front wheels are slid off. <sighs> See what I mean? I actually find the biggest pain in the backside are the front wheels on these. There, that is now on the track. So in theory. In theory, I can crash the train. Sorry, not train, locomotive. It's not train until you've got a load of stuff being pulled by. So, what we do with this, get this on the track. If you notice, it's got two slots there. The uh, rails go in between those two slots, and that literally just pretty much sits like that. And if you grab your big old locomotive, Set it on your tool like that. And there's a couple of raised grooves here which sort of guide your wheels down onto the tracks. And you just push it on. If all has gone well, you should be able to remove the tool, turn your dial, and away it works. <laughs> just like that. wobbling about a bit. I need a couple more pins in here. They fell out. I haven't got any more. Let's see. Just could do another couple there. Just wobbling around a bit as well. Okay, so the worktop surface isn't level. So yeah, very useful. I can't remember what these are exact. Uh, shall I try that one again? With proper English. <laughs> I can't remember exactly what these are called, but they are a Hornby uh, tool, and they are very good. Right, I don't think I'll do any repairs in this video, I just want to see what ones of these actually do work and what needs what. So, the one pound fifty one, and I think a child has had lots of um, fun with this one. It's Duck from Thomas the Tank Engine, and he's got no rear buffers. He's got the top missing off of his chimney. He's got no front buffers and the bits that actually go into have snapped. And he's got a big chunk out of his running board there. And this has actually been glued on at one point and I actually pulled it off. But yeah, that has been uh, glued on at one point. <laughs> well, I'm pretty certain he doesn't do anything. Well, he didn't when I um, tried him on the transformer at home, um, at Mum's. Let's just try them on this one. Dead. Yeah, totally dead. There's not even a um, sign of a short on there. So he's dead. Um, I'm not supposed to be able to do that either. But I have noticed 
this has got a completely different motor in it to the normal GWR pannier tank. Yes, I bought another one. Bite me. <laughs> I've actually got three of these exactly like this, and I've got the other one with the open back cab. This has got a closed back cab, and it's slightly longer. The coal bunker is slightly further back. So I suppose technically I've got four. But yeah, this has got a different motor in it. But apparently the ducks are actually quite hard to find for Hornby. Um, the Thompson Tank engine characters. I wouldn't be surprised if that motor's totally shot. Like I said, the fact that I can roll these wheels like that, you shouldn't be able to do that. So, uh, I'll look into him, but I suppose I could always stick the body on a different one. We'll see what this one's going to do, shall we? If anything. So yeah, that was one I will say that was, I think I told you that was the £1.51 so for bits or show or whatever. The rest of them, the other five, I paid 15 quid each for. Ooh. It's a bit noisy, but it's actually working better than it did on the transfer. It could have just been the contacts. So there we go, that was worth 15 quid. If I really wanted to, I could put this back on eBay and flip it for a few quid more. Because I've actually seen these sell for like 20 quid on eBay. At least. So, I don't know. I do like those panda tanks though. Sticking with the Hornby theme, we've got this one. I can't remember what this one's called. I had been watching one of these on eBay. I just kept putting off buying it. And I'm glad I did, because, you know, 15 quid. And they said I wanted more. <laughs> I've got a bargain here. Ooh, sparky, did you see that? <laughs> this is working absolutely fine. Sweet. Two out of five. Next up, Mine Works Collieries. Colliery, collieries? 040 and actually missing the frickin' coupling hooks. I know this one works well. And that's what it was. The coupling hook has actually fell off of one of these. It's working perfectly fine. That's really quiet as well. Sweet! Next up, we've got a lemur. In fact, the last two are lemurs. What is lemur diesel? Apparently it was a habit of lemur back in the day to take a any locomotive like this, paint it in a British colour and put the British Rail logo on it and say it's a British locomotive. I don't think we ever had anything like this over here. But I still like I can't even use it. Not unless I can get a Hornby coupling hook to hook on that bit. Go. Really well as well. Oh, I didn't turn the dial off in time. This is another one that I'd been watching on eBay for a while. I never thought to get it. It's hasn't got any couplings on it. Again, it's a lemur. Um, I don't know how I would even attempt to fit Hornby couplings on that in order to use it. But I really like that design. And for some reason, the middle wheels, you know, they're not connected to the conrod. I thought it was broken at first, but when I looked closer, there is actually no screw holes or anything on there to, to connect the um, connecting rod thing to. So it's quite an odd design. I 
wouldn't want a Hornby version of this, so I wouldn't mind getting a Hornby version or trying to stick on some. Ooh, that's pretty quick. I hardly had the dial turned. It's about a quarter of a turn. <laughs> Gone off the rails. That works well. They all work well. But I'm. Uh, it was these two that seemed to not want to work very well when I tried them on the 12 volt. But that was literally just two terminals on the back of the transformer that I'm using for the fan. So I just put the wheels up like that. And I thought these would need a service because they didn't work that well, even though ones like this one did. Which is why I thought it was these, but obviously not. I'm just working really, really well. I'm impressed. This one's a bit noisy though, but it works. If I remember rightly, this one's got a bit of a... It's got a funky motor in it. And by funky, what I mean is, if I put it on the track, give it some power. Sometimes what is that what could actually be the pickups. You sort of wiggle it around and you might get some life out of it for a few seconds and then that'll stop again. So we made it uh Oh, my green light went off on my controller. It usually means there's a short, so maybe there's a short on that one. And that one has just started working for some reason. I don't know why Desmond has decided to work, but he's decided to work. <laughs> he wasn't working, he was having gear trouble. The um, motor gear wasn't meshing with the drive gear on the axle properly. But uh, apparently not anymore, apparently he's perfectly fine. How? I haven't done anything with him, he's literally just been sitting around here. And this one's got a wee issue, and then I've got another 060 chassis here that I am actually working on. It did have half of one of these bodies on, it was the one that was missing this top bit. But it's got a smoke box on, which I'm thinking. Maybe not. I don't think we can actually take that smoke box off. Yeah, I'm just playing around with all the, uh, the pickups and trying to get those right at the minute. I've done a really piss poor soldering job on that, so I've got to use my better soldering iron and try and do a better job. But other than that, if I could sort out that solder, solder job, that would be another good one. And then maybe I could actually take the body off of this one as it's a, a good body and put it on the one with the smoke box. I thought you could take the smoke boxes off, but I actually cannot see any screws or anything that hold it on. Besides, I wouldn't be able to put the body back on. Not on this chassis. Because the screw that holds the body on goes in the side of the uh, smoke box. And I think on these ones, the ordinary ones, I don't think this has got a smoke box, but I'm pretty certain it just goes in really the weight that's on the front there. So there we have it. 
more locomotives to the collection. You know, when I started this, the hobby that is, like uh, four years ago now, I remember distinctly saying to myself, you know, I'm going to have just a 6x8 laid out because it's all I can get in the bedroom, have it so it all folds up. And then I thought, you know, it's not going to be a very big layout, so I'll just have a few various locomotives, just a few steamers and a few diesels, so I've got a bit of a selection. And a handful of, like, rolling stocks, I've got some coaches and things, just enough to play around with. I've got to have close to 100 locomotives now. In fact, I'm going to count up, and actually, I've had to uh, separate the locomotives into two boxes, I was getting that many. Um, so I've literally got one full of diesel and one full of steam. And at one point I had more diesel and steam and I think uh, my steam has actually overtaken. <laughs> oh, actually, before I end the video... I've got this bugger as well. I don't mind uh, a train set here. Now, I think we could say that this has pretty much turned into a collection as well. Everything is in here that will control of the track and everything. But when I first brought this back, I set the track up on the lounge floor. I think that's the motorised wagon. Um, yeah, when I set it up on the floor, there was a lot of wheel slip. You know, I did the exact oval that it showed, what you could make with the given track. Let's try to figure out which wheel it is that's not on there. Well, so they all look like they're on the track. Working fine on its own. What if I try and give it a coach? I'm just trying to figure out if. Look at that. A little bit of wheel slip there. Put something on the back and get the wheel slip. You see, I literally had this set up on the floor with just the one coach. And you saw none of that because I didn't move the camera, did I? Because I'm a dipstick. Hang on. I do apologise. I might actually have to uh, enrol a friend of mine to be my cameraman. <laughs> There we go. Okay. You see, it's working absolutely fine. I'm not hearing any wheel slip whatsoever when it's on its own. If I put a coach on it. bit when it starts up, especially when it's pushing. But looking at the bottom of this, I can't... No, I am 100% certain that there is no traction tyres on this. So I think what I need to do is add a couple of traction tyres. I mean, with this one coach and the uh, the dummy end, it was really struggling on the loop that I'd made on the floor. This looks like brand new. It doesn't even look like it's been used. 
but I have actually got a third one of these coaches. For some reason, my stepdad had an odd one of these coaches in his collection when he um, was selling up a couple of years ago when he wanted to go to O-Gage, which he did for a little while, and then they moved. And he tried to put an O-Gage up in the attic and just decided that was too big for the attic, so went back to double O-Gage. One of these days, I'm going to have to get up in that loft with a camera so I can show you that. Because it is coming along nicely. It's coming along a lot better and a lot faster than mine is. <laughs> but then again, I never wanted to rush mine in the first place. I just want to take the time with it. Um, I have actually got some boards at Mum's that I need to bring home. Because... Uh, the end of my layout by the cupboard doors, so basically the wall end as we face it from this end, from this angle, um, I want to put a tunnel. Now the problem I've got is I didn't leave enough space on the wall side of the track to build a wall for the tunnel, so I've got to somehow build some sort of support. <laughs> I haven't figured out how I'm going to do that yet. Um, but one of the reasons I want to put a tunnel on was just to add some depth to the layout so it wasn't just, you know, just flat everywhere. Um, then I might just put like a house on top of it or something I haven't decided yet. Or just leave it as trees and grass and things like that and hide a goat or something up there and see how long it takes people to find it. <laughs> people do silly things like that on their layouts. I've seen it done actually, there is like a, um, I don't know if you would call it a museum, but in um, the village of Roxham, there is someone there who's got a huge, I suppose you'd call it like a huge extension to his house, like a separate building to his house, I don't know what you'd call it, but it's big, um, and he's got a good six or seven different layouts in there and the public can actually go in and see it for a little donation just put a little donation in the pot i think about five pound and he actually he'll take you around the whole thing twice because he can change it using lights and things um and change all the visual effects and get you to look at different parts it's really well done but he doesn't advertise it it's all done on word of mouth and i can't remember what's bloody called now um but I do find it quite interesting. And to be perfectly honest, I've completely forgotten where I was going with that. <laughs> or whatever, what even got me on to that subject. Right. Um... It's a metal one, so that's going to be off one of the older ones. It can't be off that one, because it's got one on the rear here. It's got one of those sort of rivets on it anyway. And there isn't one on the front. So not off that one, not off them. And what one did this drop off of? I need to find my little... Um, bags of plastic coupling hooks I bought, 3D printed ones. Granted, they aren't as stiff as the metal ones, and they are quite flap, um, you know, floppy and flexible, but they do the job. And that is exactly how they were advertised, you know, they said, the, the advert actually said, you know, they're flimsy, but they do the job. Which is what you want, really, you just need them to do the job. <clears throat> and in some cases, I think they're doing it better than um, Hornby's couplings. You know, these modern ones and these plastic bits, they are just, um, I have to put, look, that's lost both. And I need them for the um, one, two, both the one, two, fives I've got here. In fact, I've got three in total now, because I've got the uh, black, white, um, swallowed livery one as well. <clears throat> I 
but I do like me an HST or three, four actually because I've got the oh wait, I can't remember what the other one's called it's not a 125, it's a different HST and I can't remember off the top of my head Does anyone know if Hornby did a version of this that I could perhaps buy? Because I don't really want to I'm just wondering if there's enough room to drill a tiny little hole for a little self-tapping screw. So I could put the couplings on the ends, you know, with a little screw. I don't know, what do you think? Would there be enough room on the end there? Maybe. Anywho, I'm going to end the video here because I'm just rambling on about stuff now. So thanks a lot for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And uh, please check the video description for links to my other two YouTube channels. Because um, I have a gaming channel and I have a Lego orientated channel as well. Um, and I also have a Twitch which I will link to, and a Discord server, which I will also link to. So uh, feel free to check those out, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye!